Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we've got another kit build it's a Banggood kit I'll put the link to the kit uh, in the description I think it was just over six UK pounds when I bought it which is probably about uh, eight dollars at the moment so um, it's debatable if you could buy the components for that much um, but it's a uh, 0 to 30 volt and up to 3 amps uh, power supply module it will require a transformer and obviously a case and also some kind of uh, cooling for the output transistor so it's not a complete um, circuit but I intend to build it and test it and then um, see if I can find myself some uh, redundant components and build myself a little uh, current limited power supply using this board so let's uh, start by having a look at the circuit diagram Okay, so taken from the Banggood uh, instructions on the website is uh, the circuit diagram and as you can see it's uh, um, quite a bit of circuitry involved here. Uh, the reason being this uh, is capable of regulating up to 24 volts, so it's up to 3 amps and um, so there's quite a comprehensive bit of circuitry. Um, essentially we've got bridge rectifier on the left turning the AC supply into DC obviously um, down the bottom there just below the bridge rectifier the D5, D6 and the couple of capacitors is a, a minus 5 volt uh, supply generating circuit a little charge pump uh, a couple of the op amps do need a minus 5 volt rail um, and then the rest of it's relatively straightforward in the center of the diagram there uh, P1 potentiometer 1 is the voltage control uh, to the left of that up near in between the two left hand op amps P2 is the uh, current regulation and RV1 over to the right underneath the, the third op amp is uh, an adjustment and there are some quite comprehensive uh, instructions on how to calibrate the current I'm not going to be able to do that until I've actually got it in a case now this isn't um, uh, a standalone circuit obviously it needs a power supply and then uh, it's going to need a case and I'm also going to fit uh, one of those um, voltage and current displays on the front so I've got a, a proper uh, idea of what's going on in terms of output and of course in true bang good fashion um, there's also another bit of the circuitry which isn't mentioned anywhere in the instructions uh, the instructions mention a fan what they don't mention is there's actually that bit on the top left there which is a 7824 24 volt uh, voltage regulator which is connected to the output of the bridge rectifier uh, and obviously grounded to the negative rail and then there's a little uh, dual pin header which uh, has a connection for a 24 volt fan no mention of that in the circuitry but uh, it's very obvious and it is marked up on the screen print uh, now Q4 which is the um, transistor on the top right there is the um, power transistor that's obviously going to get quite warm and currently I have no heat sink for that um, plan is to uh, insulate it and bolt it to, to the case of whatever I end up putting this in so I'm obviously going to have to be quite careful while I'm trying it out so that's the general circuit um, let's now have a look at uh, what the kit looks like okay before we start properly on the kit then um, just a quick word of what I'm going to be using a few weeks back I did a video on the Danu soldering iron kit that I built which is the iron this is the 3d printed box that the controller sits in that's what I'm going to be using somebody asked me if I'd do a, a long-term review to be honest I hadn't thought about that but I am actually absolutely delighted with this uh, soldering iron it really is very good indeed um, so back to the kit anyway so we get a, a usual bag of components in there there's quite a nice little component identification card which I'm going to keep um, after it's gone because that's just a handy thing to have and the circuit board itself as you might expect uh, certainly the last few Banggood kits I've built the circuit board is um, uh, looks nice the screen printing is very clear it's got the value of all the components on and uh, before I start I am going to just be wiping it over with some IPA just to make sure it's absolutely spotless which always helps with the soldering now although the instructions are very good as I mentioned earlier um, the circuit diagram I showed you um, simply has the components on uh, numbered and what I've done is just printed one of these out and just written the values on just to 
as a help for me you don't need to do that but I just um, felt more comfortable doing it that way and when I do put components on that are easy to test I will be checking them as well as reading the colour code just to be absolutely so certain so um, I'll make a start then by putting on um, the components that are nearest the circuit board which essentially here is going to be uh, resistors it's going to be um, quite a lot of diodes as well so I'll make a start on that and then show you how I'm doing okay that's all the resistors in place and all the soldered and leads uh, clipped off flush there were quite a lot of resistors um, and I don't find these blue uh, encapsulated resistors terribly easy to um, see the colour codes so with every single one I have checked the uh, value on a meter before I've put them in so I'm as sure as I can be that they're correct and even when I'd got a strip of in the case of the 10k I think there was four or five of them I still checked every one which is probably a bit over the top but uh, having had a lifetime building kits and had plenty of things that didn't work I like to try and get these basics right now if I can next job I'm going to put on the uh, diodes the smaller signal diodes of which there are quite a few um, so I'll get on with that I'm also going to put on some of the smaller ceramic capacitors and then uh, I'll let you know we're getting on so here's some small diodes then and on the board here there's a number of 4148s but there's also some 5.1 volt zeners and having checked them these are the zeners and those are the um, 1N4148s and they do look if I put the cathodes together they do look incredibly similar now there are markings on them but quite frankly even with a magnifying glass I can't see them properly I am however blessed with an oscilloscope that has a curve tracer on so I'm just going to pop the um, curve tracer on and I'm going to just test these so I'll just move the camera to the oscilloscope and you can hopefully see the results so here are the four uh, 1N4148 so first one that's characteristic of a diode second one uh, you might get them the opposite way around it just depends which way they're orientated on the on the pad here um, there's uh, I've got two diodes lead touching there that's where you're getting a strange result um, there's another one and there's another one so they're all straightforward diodes the Zeners on the other hand which which look incredibly similar actually have a much more distinctive uh, curve so they've got that uh, sort of left hand side downward that's the normal forward base but then you've got a uh, forward junction voltage but then to the right there you've got the second knee which is the the voltage the zener voltage knee and the second zener if we'll pop that on and there you are so those two are clearly the zeners so i'm going to put those in first to avoid confusion Okay, so I'm progressing with the circuit board so that's all the resistors in as I mentioned before all the small signal diodes the zeners the ceramic caps here which were actually all clearly marked um, so there was no problem in identifying those I did check them for value but uh, I was pretty certain what they were anyway as the numbers are written on and I've also put these large diodes on uh, you might want to consider um, one of these little by 3d printed this it's a little device that allows you to um, to put a component on and then bend the leads and that came in quite handy for these uh, four diodes here that form the the input bridge rectifier because they've got fairly stout um, leads on them so i think next is going to be um probably the integrated circuits because they're the nearest to the board there aren't any sockets so i'm going to solder them straight in but they're uh, tl uh, Oh, four one, I think it is. Are they? Oh, eight one. Sorry, uh, oh, I do think they're a dual op amp. Uh, so I shall solder those in next. One or two of them, I'm just going to have to sort the legs out because they've had a, a tough life in transit. But they're about the next lowest component. So I'll get that done, and then also fit the smaller transistors. I'm not going to put them right close to the board. I'm going to leave a little bit of lead length so I don't have to give them too much of a thermal shock. okay so that's three uh, eight pin op amps um, put on there I've been careful to make sure the notches are oriented in the right direction and I've also put on these two transistors um, 
there's a 9015 and a 9014 so I was careful to identify which was which I've left them with about two or three millimeters of lead um, so I didn't um, have to give them too much thermal shock and I was particularly careful with the, the IC and the transistors to be very very brief with the, the contact with the iron on the board so I'm going to leave it there for now and I think I'll come back to this on a new day as uh, as time is getting on but um, so far so good pleased with the circuit board seems to solder very well nice plated through holes so no complaints there okay I'm not entirely sure of the the best orders to do things now there's a an LED that's quite small I'm going to put that on next and then I've got uh, these DC connectors I've got a multi-turn pot um, the current and voltage adjustment pots uh, and then uh, another three semiconductors um, some small electrolytics and then this quite big electrolytic and a fairly large uh, uh, high wattage resistor as well so I'm just going to size them up and uh, and put a few bits on and then uh, see how it looks okay that's uh, all the components now fitted to the board a couple of um, things to bear in mind are that this um, output um, transistor here is going to get warm so I've actually not shortened the legs at all because I've got an intention that when it's in a case I want to bolt it to the case so I've got the ability there to move it if necessary and if I do want to then install the legs late uh, shorten the legs later I can um, and there's a connection here for a 24 volt fan and it says positive there and when you look at the um, symbol underneath there's a line across there and I think the line actually means uh, where the bar is but I'm very glad I checked because if you take the associated wire that fits like that the positive wire sort of I might have fitted it the wrong way around but if you saw the symbol you'd, you'd guess you'd understand what I meant but fitted that way red is definitely um, correctly connected um, to, to the positive side so a big capacitor two uh, the two pots for adjusting current and voltage um, and then the input and output connectors and also the uh, multi-turn pot there for fine-tuning it the um, D882 semiconductor here um, I soldered in the heat sink then I bolted the semiconductor on and then I soldered in the semiconductor when I when I'd got it uh, if, when I'd effectively got the correct leg lengths and then finally of course put this large electrolytic in so that's the board um, pretty much finished so now I'm going to uh, test it so I'll, I'll get set up to test it and then we can uh, see if I've made any mistakes or not and hopefully there won't be any smoke okay and finally um, we've got a setup here to test it out and uh, a couple of things to note I've cleaned off the flux residue with some uh, IPA and a, and a brush make sure there's nothing that's going to be corroding those connections and I did mention uh, earlier uh, the very start and I was talking about the circuit diagram that there is that additional component the voltage regulator that's it there it's very easy to um, see where it goes and orients it doesn't matter and doesn't affect any other part of the circuit and that's the output for the fan uh, in the instructions that the circuit's actually shown with the big heat sink on this output transistor which there isn't in the kit so I suspect they've added that bit and telling you you need a fan they even give you a uh, connection to connect up to the, the fan so that's good um, that will need insulating from any heat sink um, or make sure the heat sink is insulated from anything that's going to be touching ground so um, that's current that's voltage uh, the red LED there uh, is uh, tells us when it's going into current limiting so I've got my variable AC supply here it's certainly not capable of delivering three amps it probably isn't even capable of an amp so I'll just connect that up and showing 15.6 volts there I've got the um, voltage potentiometer somewhere in the middle so if I turn it fully left uh, we're, whoops, we're right down to, to zero and if I turn it fully to the right we're getting about 23 volts and I think I've got about something like 24 volts uh, AC on the input here so yeah that's working absolutely fine now 
I'm being very cautious because obviously these components potentially could get hot um, and so I'm not going to try uh, testing the, the heavy current output now but one thing I can show you is the current limiting so if I briefly short the output and you watch the LED and you see it come on there it goes into to current limiting mode so um, and it very quickly recovers to the stated voltage and if I drop that down to say I don't know 10 volts um, should still get precisely the same effect and quickly recovers when uh, uh, it's no longer detecting a short condition so that's uh, good um, so next stage for me is and it's not going to form part of this video is I need to find a case and uh, get a, a display and obviously some kind of uh, transformer to to drive the AC input there is a um, now that we've seemed to have escaped COVID for a while but there is now uh, uh, in a couple of days time there's a uh, radio rally uh, fairly close to me up in County Durham so I'm going to go up there and see if there's anything there which looks a bit scrap like that I might be able to recover a, a transformer and a case from that's the plan okay well that's uh, kit built and um, remarkably it worked first time um, having spent pretty much all my life tatting with electronics um, it always brings a smile to my face when things work first time. Uh, I was careful when I built it, but even so, um, when you've got that many components, it is easy to make a slip up. So I'm very pleased to say I didn't just for once. I'm also acutely aware that I am mortal, and so uh, next kit may not work first time. Anyway, this time we had a success straight away, which is great. Um, so I hope you've uh, enjoyed it, and uh, links to the kit uh, underneath should you in the description should you uh, want to build one. Certainly seems uh, okay for what I want to use it for. Um, if you've liked the video, please click the thumbs up, uh, and, I, and ideally if you've not already subscribed, um, subscribing and clicking thumbs up are both really helpful to me. If you're in the market for a meter, you saw the Kiwitz meter in use uh, on this video. Um, there's a discount code also in the description and if you use that you'll get some discount that helps the channel. If you've already done that, thank you very much and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.